Hello and welcome to everyone. Our guest today is uh, Brent Moore Jr., MMA fighter. So thank you, thank you so much for accepting this invitation. Uh, when did you start uh, training MMA? How was your career? How did you, how did you decide uh, that MMA is going to be your call in life? Man, as ask that I've been doing MMA since. Well, I, 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 let me slow it down now. <laughs> Uh, from 3 to 12, I did karate, right? And then I stopped uh, martial arts altogether, doing football. But then at 15, I started boxing. Um, and I've been boxing uh, ever since then till now. And then at 17, I started doing jiu-jitsu. And it just naturally progressed into, like, because I, I, I was able to kick. I was doing good in boxing. I was doing really good in boxing. Uh, as an amateur, but um, I, you know, was also doing good in jiu-jitsu tournaments, and uh, I felt like MMA would be the natural progression, you know, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be like the greatest fighter ever, because I watched a lot of anime and kung fu movies and stuff like that, you know, so uh, as a martial artist, I know that the best fighter in the planet is not a boxer, it's or or a kickboxer, it's an MMA fighter, you know, because it's like you know, it's like two dudes are just like get in there and fight, and that's it. Like very, there's barely really any rules in MMA, you know. Like there's like obvious stuff, like no eye gouging, and no groin strikes, and stuff like that. But like you know, there's a couple of things we got to keep it like sporterized, you know. But overall, it's like it's pretty wild in there. Pretty wild. It's not like boxing or kickboxing. There's like it's very wild, wild westy, if you will. So, you know, that's uh, that's that's, that's how that's how I went down this path. I've always been on this path, I guess you could say. Yeah, we can. So. Oh, there. <laughs> that was my girlfriend calling me. All I'm at. I'm south. Message her in a minute if she sees this on the and then I love you. Like, you know, don't be don't be mad. She's gonna get this going. Okay, okay. There we go. No there a quick message. Call you back, call her back later, you know. Okay, if you have to reply, no problem. No, that's all good. She'll she'll probably be here in the next like fifteen minutes or something like that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh how would you describe your fighting style? Uh, I would say I'm definitely more. Uh, uh, freestyle, I guess, would be the, the, the best way to describe it. But um, I would say I'm more of a grappler than a striker. I've been striking more in my life than I've been grappling. But grappling is like, it feels very right to me to do. You know, it feels very right for me to do grappling. And I guess, yeah, that would be the way I would describe my, uh, my uh, style. Brent Jitsu. <laughs> wow, it's very original description, very, very much original. So, who is coaching you at the moment? Uh, coaching me, um, you got Derek Krantz, uh, you also have uh, Derek Krantz, uh, LFA champ, UFC fighter, uh, also, um, I got James Compton, boxing coach, Larry Maxson, and uh, Wade Pomeroy. They, uh, they're, they're like my primary is I got also Aaron Strigel, Aaron's uh, who's teaches me judo. Aaron is the one that keeps me and keeps him keeps me in line with my judo. Um, and uh, a lot of different a lot of different coaches. Got Eric Sands, he he comes up and he he up. Uh, well, I go to him and I see him here and there. Um, you know, but my my primary my primaries are are, are Derek James, Larry Wade. Those are my those are my primaries. So, do you have some, uh, let's say, original nickname? Oh, uh, well, my nickname? Yeah. Yeah, it, Killer Killer B. It came from uh, it came from Naruto, right? So, uh, Naruto is a show about ninjas, ninjas and all that stuff. You know, it's anime. In anime, there's a lot of pale-skinned people. Uh, so in the show later on, the second in the second series where they're like teenagers and stuff. There's, there's like, like uh, this one dude, dude Killer Bee, like, like a black dude. There's, there's like, like, you know, they start expanding on the universe in the show, and then, then like, like apparently, apparently you get to see where all the black people have been at. They've been in the Cloud Village. 
like, like uh, and they're, they've been in their own spot. They've been in their own spot. So it's just like, oh, snap, it's black people. And then, and then you know, um, he's got like, his hair is braided, his hair is braided back, but his hair would be like, if it was unbraided, it would be like how mine is. And he's a big goof. He's a goofball. But he's also like one of the strongest characters in the show. So that's... His, His character, character fits, fits me and the way, way I, I am. am. I'm rather, uh, I'm rather good at fighting, but I'm overall just a big goofball, you know, a nerd, <laughs> a huge nerd. So, what can you say about your first amateur fight? Oh my god, it went horrible. Oh my god, Vladimir, bro. Worst fight of my life. Worst fight of my life. Oh my god. So I'm like in there. The fight starts. It's just like, I got knocked out in like, I don't know, 45 seconds. It's like the fight starts. Boom, touch gloves. Boom, 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 boom. On this dude's ass. I am on this dude's ass. I got this. I shoot in for a takedown, and this dude's like throwing a leg kick, and I catch his knee. He wasn't even throwing a knee. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he was throwing a leg kick, and like, I'm right as I'm shooting in on a takedown, and like, if he, he like, Brings, brings his leg, leg back, back to, to like, like stop the kick, kick to stop the leg kick, and run, bah, smack dab into his knee. And, and man, man, I went to sleep, sleep sleep. I was absolutely sleep sleep. sleep. I was gone. And, and I'm just like, like no, nah, nah, like you know, you know all after the fact, like I, I don't come to like, like, like from what they're telling me. I was um like responding and there like afterwards, you know. But I don't remember like coming to mentally up until like uh, they were just like, well, take the ambulance just in case. Because I like, I'm telling you, I got knocked out. It was, it was like, it was like stiff. I mean, I don't know. I was there, but I don't remember it. You know, um, they tell me I was there at least. And uh, like, so like that that fight is a blur to me. So it's just like I remember warming up, boom, 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 boom. boom. Walking, walking out, out boom, boom, waking up in the ambulance. Just, just like, like that. that. I don't even remember my first fight. <laughs> so, who was your toughest amateur opponent? Mm. That's, that's a good question. That's a good question. That's so, like, like, like uh, there have been a couple of tough fights uh, that I've had. Like, uh, one with, you know, I, I would say my toughest fight was uh probably against Andy Carrington because uh my fight was him with him was a three round fight and it it was the fight where I had completely committed my life to MMA fighting at that point like you know I got off the like because there was a time there was a point like a year two year gap in my MMA uh, career where I didn't fight at all because I was working as a firefighter and going to school and stuff you know. And I I just completely left the game along, you know, I strayed away from the path and um, I fought Andy when I was getting back on the path and like, well, when I was like committed to the process and like becoming more of the fighter I am now. And uh, man, that fight was, that fight was tough. Like, um, cause Andy had had way more fights than me at that point. Um, that was, I would say that's probably my toughest amateur fight um as far as like the full spectrum the 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 toughest fight as far the toughest fight as far as like like the the, the fight that had that i that i wound up losing you know that had the that i had like that i was the most in there at the same time was against probably shane shapiro uh me and him were both brown belts at the time um crazy story with that he um like they i was told by uh i was told by wade like we me, me and aaron vickers were both told by uh which aaron was with us at the time he was telling us you know we don't have a fight and i get called by the promoter um the monday before the monday before the fight and he's just like yeah i called your coach and you're you're, you're not fighting and i'm just like we were told that we weren't he's like i called you he called i called aaron and aaron said y'all aren't coming and he's like we're like we got, we got told we weren't going to fight. And, and like, that, I don't get it. And he's just like, no, dude, you're like the main event of the card. You you need to be here. And I'm just like, whoa. You know, he told me and Aaron both this. Well, I'm, I was the main event. Aaron was like a little bit further down on the card. But I was like, whoa. And I'm just like, yo, I can't, I can't make weight now because I've been fucking off for the past couple of days eating whatever. And he's just like, just try to do the best you can. You know, we'll get it squared away. And, Got a flight out there. Um, 
flew out there. I I, I, I missed, missed weight by like I think one one pound. Uh, which since it was a title fight, um, I had to be fifty five. You know, I couldn't be fifty six. I wound up being like fifty six. Or fifty six points. I don't. Remember. I don't really remember. I, mean, I just. I do remember just that I was missed weight. It's like the only. It's the only time I've ever missed weight uh, for any competition. Um. So, but yeah, he. Yeah, he tells us this. Like you know, we. We get that. We get there. Um. We get there. It was like something out of a hangover. You know, we're like scrambling, trying to figure out how to cut weight and so forth and so on. I had to like. Like, like, uh, uh they, they drove, drove us to the hotel, hotel. we didn't have a car, we had to walk to a rental place, place, which is like, I don't know, I was on something away, away but, but it was no, there was no straight road to it, it was just like, like here's the hotel, here's the, 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 the uh, car rental place, and it's just desert, and we're just like, oh my god, you know, because me and Aaron got a fight in like two days, and we're just like, holy shit, we can't do this, and then we're just like, why are we bitching so much, just stuff, it's just like a mile, maybe two, you know? Um, but yeah, Shane, Shane's probably my hardest uh, fight. I wound up losing to him. I got a uh, red naked choked. Um, but yeah, that, that was that, he's probably my hardest fight. Like my most skilled opponent, if you will, at fighting as an amateur. Like you know, me and him are both black belts now. That fool was strong, man. <laughs> that was a strong dude. What can you say about your first professional fight? Uh, okay, so. I took my first professional fight on five days notice um, for LFA, which I just fought for like two weeks ago. Uh, I fought AJ Nichols, uh, wound up. It was, uh, there was a lot going on, um, you know, those that, those that, I can't tell, them, I can't tell the story of what happened from my first professional fight because uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of details into the story, but like those who... Those, those who know, know, and those who see the, the those who see this interview will also be like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, but yeah, it was a really, it was really, really tough fight, fight really hard fight. fight. I'm in, I'm fighting this fight. Derek's, Derek's there with me, and um, like, like you know, dude, dude kick, kick those a kick, flip, flip them. Yeah, you know, goes, goes for a takedown. I don't go for a wind up. Um, he winds up. I wind up getting his back, and the dude. Does this back elbow just like that? Boom! And pops me like right here, fractures my orbital, and I'm just like, and, I, and, I, and I, like I don't, I don't know this during the fight. It's just my, my nose is bleeding, my everything hurts. I'm in like the most pain I've ever felt in my life. Like, um, he doesn't know it, but like it, it took me like three, four seconds to like really come to in that fight. You know, not, not like I was losing. I was just in so much pain. Like if he would have been able to. Boom and shake me off, you know, and then just go to punch, and he probably would have won that fight, like right there, uh, just because I was I was hurting so bad, you know. Um, it's not I wasn't wobbling or anything. It just come front out and fracture my arm, you know. Um, so I was I was I was messed up in that moment. Um, and then like you know, uh, I held on to him as hard as I could. He does wind up shaking me off. I'm in the bottom of half guard, and I'm just like, oh my god, and I'm just like. In, in like the dog, dog fight position against the cage, cage. he's like throwing elbows. elbows. He's really trying to hurt me right now, and I'm just like thinking monologuing in my head, and I'm just like, oh my god, like like even elbows. I'm like, oh my god, I cannot believe I'm fighting as a professional. What am I doing? You know what I'm saying? I don't need to be here. I don't deserve to be here. I'm not this dude. You know? And then I hear Derek like, get up and quit playing. Like you know, um, you know, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want Derek to beat me up. Derek's like been beating me up for a very long time, so I'm very scared of Derek. <laughs> you know, he's 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 my first coach, and he's 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 been whooping me down since I was a teenager. Uh, but he's like, quit playing, and I'm just like, okay. And he's, I'm like, okay, he's right. I get up immediately because you know, I had the juice. I just didn't know I had the juice. <laughs> then. He, did, he gets a single leg, I come over, trap him, him flip, flip him over, and rear naked choke, choke him. And, and like, I have this dude in this rear naked choke, choke, and I'm just like, squeezing as hard as I can. And I'm just like, oh my god, like my arms are burning. I'm squeezing so hard. And I'm just like, oh my god, these pro, like most people, I know I'm killing this dude. I know I'm killing this dude. And I'm just like, oh my god, man, these dudes. 
these, these pro dudes are something else. else. These, these ain't, these ain't, ain't these aren't are like these amateur, 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 like these amateur, amateur dudes. They, they would have been done tapped. And I'm just like, like either, either, either my arms are about to die, or and he's about to shake free, and I'm not gonna have no arms. Or like that's it. I don't know. I'm just like spazzing out, you know. And um, I can hear Derek. He's like, you got him. You got him. You got, you got him, Brad. Brad. He's gonna tap. tap. And then Derek's, Derek's like, face, whole, whole facial expression change. And he's like, he's not gonna tap. He yells at me, he's not gonna tap. And then he's like, he yells, he starts talking shit. He's like, you're going to sleep, buddy. You're going to sleep. And then like, I was just like squeezing, like you know, I'm not, I'm like, I hear you, and I'm just like, just, I'm, I'm dead locked in. I'm dead locked in. I'm like a dog with his jaws locked. I don't hear, I barely hear anything else. And then the, and then the ref. Like, like grabs, grabs my hand, he pulls me off, and I'm just like, like yeah, I won! Yeah, and I jump, jump off the cage, and I'm just like, woo! And I'm and just, just like, like, oh my god, god what happened? <laughs> so that's my first professional fight. Yeah. It was a top oh. story. A really, really top story. So, is Rare Naked Choke your special move? Man, I don't know if I call it a special move, but it's definitely what I get the most out of. Like, um... Being, Being a black belt on the mat, mat um, there's, there's, there's a level of grappling, grappling that I'm that, that I'm at that it, it, it's, it's hard, hard to explain. explain. Like it, one, one black belt to another, they like get it, it but if, if you're not that, it's hard to like put to numbers. I guess the the how, the, the way, way I understand grappling to the next guy. Um, like, like you know, you know like, I'm not saying I can't get beaten by something like a purple belt or a blue belt or even a white belt in a fight. Um, it's, it's just, just like, like once I start, start, once the gears start moving in my direction, it's like starts doing this for me, like you know, or it starts doing this for me and it starts doing this for them too. Like it's all, it starts easing easing into my lane and uh, it starts going downhill for them, uh, or really uphill for them. It starts going downhill for me and uphill for them, you know, and um, people wind up giving me their back and I just take the rear naked choke. Cause I'm nasty like that, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, outstanding. Uh, so uh, you phone food Andy Brissett, right? Yes, sir. So uh, phone flu is technically very, very difficult submission. So how did you execute it? Man, so whenever, um, whenever I got, whenever um, I was swinging on, I was starting to fight. I slung a right hand that was nasty, barely missed Andy Brosette's face. It like it like whiffed him by this, and it would have killed him if it would have hit, right? It's like he felt that, and immediately after that, he's just like, "Up oh, for to take this dude down," because um, you know, the people know people know I'm a ninja on the mat. You know, they they know they absolutely know I'm a ninja on the mat. They just don't. I, I don't know. People don't want to strike with me all the time. But uh, anyways, he goes for this takedown. He, I, he fails. I reverse him, and then I get him on the bot. I get him like he's on the bottom and on the cage. He wraps around my neck, and I'm just like, okay, okay, this is this is what I think he's going for. Like he's going for a guillotine, but I'm in control of his lower body, so he can't really finish it like he wants. And he's like sitting up against the cage, and I'm just like, oh, I seen Derek do this. Like you know, Derek did it uh, to Daniel Ninja Roberts, right? And I was just like, ooh, I seen Derek do this. Derek did something exactly like this. So he's like, got my neck, and I'm just like, I've done the bomb flu many times, just not this way. And I was just like, I wonder if I can get this. And like, I, I reach around his uh, head, and I connect my hands, and I'm just like, I feel the cage behind me, and I'm just like, oh my God, that's so much pressure I'm about to put on this dude's neck. And I connect my hands, and then boom, smash, smash my shoulder into his neck. Immediately, immediately, I felt like so much pressure on his neck that he was like, um, it's like he wanted to breathe out. It's like he was trying to exhale harder than he was in try, wanting to inhale. But more than anything, he was losing blood. And I'm just like smashing it in. And I'm just like, yeah, I got this. I knew I had it, you know, from half guard, which is like even harder to finish, you know? And I'm just like, yeah, I got this. And then he taps and I'm just like, I knew I had it. So Derek, I guess, showed me it's possible, like to do, and then I was just, I just did the same thing. Did the same thing my teacher did in his professional fight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fun full choke from half guard is uh, 
Well, it's super technical. I mean, from side control, it's kind of not that hard, but from half guard, very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was um, I was happy to get that one. I was like, that's cool. That's cool. I'm, especially on the pro record, I've gotten a bomb flu um, in my amateur career too, but uh, it was it was a side control one. I would have had one uh, when I fought Gianetti, but uh, I goofed. I goofed. Gianetti's a lot better on the ground than uh, I, I gave him credit for. I will say that. He, Gianetti almost broke my whole knee. Put me in a heel hook. The first heel hook he put me in was like really good. But the second one, I was just... The first one he put me in got had me a little bit like, whoa, put some respect on his name. And then the next one, I was just like, I got this. I'm not going to fall for that again. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Did uh, Edmilson Freitas give you a hard time at your LFA debut? Uh, uh, Edmilson Freitas? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edmilson gave me, gave me, gave me shit for three rounds straight. Holy, oh my God. So the deal, the deal with Edmilson, and people don't always like think about it, or even, or, or even know about it. Whenever he, uh, whenever he, besides him being a black belt. Or second degree black belt. Um, the dude missed weight by like six, seven pounds. The dude, missed, yes, I'm not shitting you. I, I'm serious. People say that I'm serious. Dude missed weight by like, like a half a weight class, you know. So it's just like on top of like um, on top of him being uh, a uh, second degree black belt on the mat. Yeah, he had six. He had six, seven pounds of. Didn't have to cut weight on him. He was probably goddamn. He was probably probably close to 175, 180 come fight day. Yeah, he gave me hell. <laughs> I'm not shitting you, man. He missed weight by a lot. He missed weight by a lot. Like not like um, in big scale things. Like you know what I'm saying. If it was something huge, like I don't, like you know if, it, if I wasn't so confident in myself, like if it like it was just like. This dude's like, I can't give this dude anything. That type of deal, you know, I probably wouldn't have fought him because that's a lot of weight to miss by, you know? And that's a lot of energy that he'd have. But, um, yeah, man. Yeah, Ed Nelson gave me shit for three rounds straight. <laughs> he, he, he gave me pure hell, you know? And about uh, uh, Giannetti? Uh, Giannetti. So... Um, what happened with Giannetti, whenever I was fighting him, because I know some people are like, oh, it's whatever, boy. Some people are like, oh, it's a boring fight, and some people are like, they enjoyed it. Um, Giannetti was, is a lot slicker on the ground than he looks in, in one, on one hand. On the other hand, whenever we, when I had him on the bottom, he was doing a lot of, like, Gumby Jiu-Jitsu. Like, gum, what I mean when I say Gumby, what I mean when I say Gumby is, um, like, things that tall people can do that somebody like my height or shorter can't do like you know doing stuff like trying to wrap his arm around his leg from the bottom of side control and stuff like that and Giannetti like held me down on top of him a lot as opposed to um like trying to get fighting to get up and different things like that but at the same time it's like anytime I tried to pass or like tried to do anything dynamic he'd like start trying to throw up something weird so like you know I gotta res I had to respect his game, um, and uh, the more and more the more and more I was like either a around him, listening to his interviews, or just uh, in the fight with him, I, I, I was picking up he's a lot he was a lot tactically smarter than just about everybody else I fought. Like most people, um, they don't do a lot of interviews and other stuff like that in my past fights, but Giannetti did a lot of interviews and different things like that, and I can tell, like, he was, he was put, he was playing chess with his interviews, sometimes he put out some, something real, sometimes he put out something fake, sometimes he just fuck off, you know, you don't know what you're getting whenever you, because I do that in my interviews sometimes, you know, and, um, like, I actually talked with him after his fight, I was just like, yeah, man, I could tell, he's like, uh, I could tell you're a smart fighter, and he's just like, dude, you are one of the you're like the you're like the first person to figure out that I'd be playing chess with my with my interviews. Like you said in one of your interviews and I was just like, yeah, I could tell cuz I do the same thing. Me and Giannetti were like very similar in certain ways like 
habits wise, not habits wise, but just uh, this, we have certain personality traits that are similar. That's why I was like picking up certain things on them. Probably digressing, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Probably all over the place. Yeah, outstanding. So, what are your thoughts on LFA as a promotion? Uh, I think it's a good promotion. Um, I think it's a good promotion. It's uh, one of the few promotions going on in the world right now with uh, the 2020 coronavirus, the curse of 2020 going on this this uh, this election fucking election year. Oh my god. Oh, but um, aside from aside from uh. That it's, it's, it's a good promotion. I like I like it. Uh, a lot of guys uh, on the top, on the higher end of LFA go to the UFC. Um, I hope to get to the UFC myself. You know, um, different things like different things like that. Hope to be champion of uh, 155 sooner than later. If the UFC doesn't pick me up, you know, sooner than later be the champion at uh, 155. Have uh, three champions ran through uh, forty a champion at 45, 55, and a champion at one seventy, all out of the uh, all out of the same gym. You know, be great. Yeah, it's really really awesome. So your plans for the future are to battle for the UFC, but if UFC doesn't happen, you're gonna keep the ball rolling. You're gonna keep training, right? You absolutely. You said it best, that Vlad. All right, uh, I was about to ask you, would you like to add something to this interview? Is there something maybe we missed? Maybe you would like to greet someone? And sorry because my PC was lagging a bit. Maybe the picture will be kind of weird, but uh, we, I hear what you say, so just don't get angry, oh, okay? For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, first off, uh, I love your accent. Awesome. I mean, to you it's not an accent. To me, like, you know, I'm sure you're like, Holy shit, this guy. <laughs> it's really awesome. I appreciate you for Englishing it up with me, you know. I'm sure you have your own, you know, cooler language than English that you speak, you know. So, I appreciate you Englishing it up with, with your boy. Well, I can say you in native. Daiman Nashia Yazik. Daiman Nashia Yazik. The Bulgarian. <laughs> oh, you see, look at that. Look at that. I'm over here. I'm over here on factory preset default English, and you, you over here got your Bulgarian going on, man. Look, look at you. Put me to shame. My girlfriend is uh, well, she's from the Philippines, but uh, she's uh, she's German. Like her nationality, like what she is genetically, is American and German. Uh, so she she speaks like she speaks a shitload of languages, like German, English, French. She's like talks all this stuff. She's teaching me a little bit of German, and I'm just like, yeah, German's a funny language. Yeah, they can German. all Deutsch sprechen also. Ooh, I don't know how to say I don't know how to say it really, but I did it really, really. So how many how many do you speak languages? Why five? Five. God, dog, because as soon as you said that, I was like, you speak, you speak, you speak German also. I was like, what? What? Oh, man. My English is, uh, I don't even know what trash is. <laughs> it's schlock. You know? Uber schlock. <laughs> don't know. I know in my native it's bokluk. Was that, that's what, that's what trash is, That's trash is, in Bulgarian. Bokluk. Bokluk. Oh, I see your language is funny too. They got a whole bunch of funny words in uh in, in German, like Spieler. Uh, there are many funny. Yeah, man. You know, so yeah, I, I hey I can't hey I can't um speak more German speak German with you then. I'll, I'll work on that. I'll work on that for later. Hopefully by the time I'm in the UFC, like you know, way way more on the German the German speak. Way better. Get my Deutsch. Get my Deutsch. Super sober. I think that was the right word. Uber sober. Clean. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. I was yeah, about yeah, to say Zauber schmutzig. Is clean. Yeah, I was about to say schmutzig. No, that's dirty. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Your girlfriend is doing a great job. Excellent. Ah, Annette, I love you. Uh, another thing. Isaac. I love you too, Tristan, Oliver, Oliver, uh, his birthday was the day after my fight, he turned six, that's awesome, I love you, he normally, if he was here, he'd be like right here, 
uh, in my interviews, like anytime he's at the house, he like he's like a little back, he's like a little background dude. He'll be like, he'll, usually he plays the game and stuff, but he'll be like jumping on the couch and stuff. Or, but uh, sad he's not here. He can't be in this interview. I hate that. But you know, glad I got to speak with you, brother. Thank you so yeah. much for this lovely interview. One of the most entertaining interviews I've ever had. I'll finish the creation tomorrow. If the picture lags a bit, please, you know, technical. But it will be one of the greatest interviews ever. Well, well yes! Yes! That's, That's what we want. Because yeah. I'm the best. Got this shirt. Look at this shirt. This, shirt. this, this is my walkout shirt. It's one of my favorite, favorite, shirt. one of my favorite shirts. Killer bitch. Look how colorful it is. I'm not gay, yeah, but, but, like... Well, there is no but. I'm just, I'm not gay. <laughs> These are nice colors, man. Top. Oh, my logo. It's really, really awesome logo. And one of the best walkout shirts I've ever seen. Plus, uh, your walkout is kind of different from all walkouts yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, try to be different for sure. But uh, let me know. Um, let me know uh, either on Instagram or however, whatever, whatever way you want to contact me. Uh, what goes down with the interview? Like how I can, like you know, share it that that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can share it for sure. But uh, just the picture is a bit. But uh, you can share it for sure. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for this, and uh, I will message you tomorrow. Okay. For sure. Boom. 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 <laughs> All right. All right, brother.